Okay, then we're taking over here. So yeah, let's talk with Lloyd. We just saved the world. Okay, challenge room. Alright, sorry for the break over there. So as Lloyd mentioned just over here, we now have an extra mode of extra rooms to go through. And maybe some other extras as well. Like maybe an arena mode? I'm not sure. This is all new to me right now and I'm quite excited to see what new challenges lay in store here. After all, we did defeat Herbert, who was the hardest boss or second hardest boss depending on how it went. I would say that personally the Cyborg Colossus Mach 3 was more difficult, mainly because I had to go down to its level and attack it, and it didn't have regenerating health, and well, its swings were a lot larger and my health wasn't at max, plus I didn't have the guided rockets. Alright, let's go through these extra floors and see what, what the deal with these are. So I guess these will be the challenge rooms of course. And as I said before, I will be giving my final taunts on Callie's trials as a whole while I go through these. Well, first is a backstory of how I actually got Callie's trials uh, in the first place. I was browsing through the Reddit Let's Play, the Let's Play subreddit, and one of the developers or distributors for Callie's trials, or well, Dire Trick specifically, they were mentioning that they were distributing it, uh, distributing review copies for Let's Players. So I, uh, I liking a, a lot of um, indie titles, decided to play, decided to request it and do a let's try of this. I got the key and I did a let's try about a few months ago, and I quite enjoyed what I saw, so I decided to do a let's play after I completed several of my Mega Man uh, let's plays. So here I am playing the game. So with that out of the way, now how do, what I think about the game as a whole. The con starting with the controls, the controls are very solid. They, are, they aren't really. They aren't floaty. Once you once you do a jump, you will jump. And and everything feels responsive. Sure, and weapons don't necessarily. Not all the weapons have exactly a punch. The projectiles do definitely, but all the weapons kind of feel like they're just there. They don't really have any reaction to when you fire. Well, some of them do, like the spike gun, other things. But many of the weapons only have a minor knockback, and it isn't really that dramatic. It's really when the enemies get hit where you can see the effects, especially with things like the rocket launcher explosions or the freeze gun. Graphics are pretty much retro. I'm going to be a little bit less harsh in the graphics because this was originally Cali's Caves 2 on the mobile platforms. So as this was basically a mobile port from a PC, I mean mobile port from mobile devices to PC, I'll be more forgiving of the sprite art. It is relatively decent, but I, w I wish there was less usage of all these blocky, of these rep repetitive blocks. Sure, I do like that each of these areas has their own unique aesthetics in terms of the, the sprite sheet but, or tile set. But I really wish there was more variety, like slopes, um, smaller areas, or smaller. If the if the tiles were smaller and more, had more variety, I would be fine with that as well. But right now, not as much. And perhaps more areas, because we only have about 6 or 7 tile sets to go through. The sequel to this game fixed it by adding a lot more areas, which are smaller in size overall, but they have more variety and are thus more memorable, personally. Sound, the sound work is also pretty, uh, pretty good as well. Well, fairly decent. Nothing is really memorable, but some of the, uh, but some of the enemies are or at least some of the effects of getting hit by enemies are re very recognizable. And now on to the gameplay itself. Gameplay after playing all of this is... how should I say it? Average. It, it, is, there, it, is, it is a competent platformer, sure, but there aren't that many challenges. There aren't that many... in fact, there aren't, there, there aren't any even moving platforms. All of the hazards that are instant dead, or even partially damaging, are all static. Most of the challenges you'll face here that can kill you are going to be getting uh, getting knocked into these instant death traps, but that's mainly due to enemies, not really due to anything else. It's not due to the platforms themselves being hard to get by. Other than one segment, as you saw in the final area where I was silent, where there was a little bit more precise jumping, everything else was pretty much pretty standard fare to go through, or very basic. 
So the gameplay I would say is pretty average. The main meat where the game gets is fun is the weapon variety. Or basically fighting all the enemies. In terms of weapon variety, this game was pretty spot on. There were 12, well, 13 weapons, 12 guns, and the sword. The sword was relatively decent, of course. You could use it to stun lock uh, normal enemies, like uh, smaller enemies. But other than its uh, ability to fire energy waves and mainly its ability to uh, destroy many projectiles and deflect it, it really wasn't that useful. The guns really took center stage. There are twelve guns. There are twelve main uh, uh, guns in this game, and they're they weren't really balanced, personally speaking. There was a there was a combination of utility and main damage weapons. The utility weapons like the spike gun did their job because they're only used for uh, for platforms, uh, for creating new platforms. Otherwise, they weren't really that good as a main damage shielding weapon. Things like the freeze ray, they really should have uh, they really should have allowed uh, being able to equip multiple weapons at once, so it would have been useful. Otherwise, as it stands right now, it isn't that useful because by the time you can switch to other weapons, the enemies will probably br broken out of freeze unless you sw Unless you have unlocked the final form of the freeze ray. Even then, it's just fa a faster DPS in order to use your rocket launcher, flamethrower, blade uh, blade gun, or boomerangs. Sure, it is it is safer to use the freeze ray, but as it can't freeze bosses, it really loses its effectiveness because you can deal with most enemies. Any most enemies in this game are very easy to deal with. And even the ones that aren't as easy, with enough uh, practice, you can deal with them. You can deal with them well enough. Whoa, that was a pretty tight jump over there. Now for weapons, I'll be going through the all 12 weapons. Uh, guns, specifically. The pistol was a nice starting weapon. When I first played this game, I thought the pistol was going to be pretty... Well, was pretty weak, and it is one of the weakest weapons in the game, definitely. But its upgrades make it pretty, uh, pretty powerful up in its own right. Especially once I figured out that we can you can rapid fire the uh, semi-automatic weapons uh, to be fired faster. Because normally I thought you would fire the weapons like this, but as you, as I learned in the second part, if you rapid fire it, it makes it a lot more powerful. In fact, it makes it much better than the assault rifle, which is supposed to be automatic. But because the pistol had pinpoint accuracy, it made it, it made the pistol a lot more powerful than the assault rifle until the final form. Or that the final form of the assault rifle be, uh, beat the pistol, but the pistol, especially in its many of its forms, or all of its forms, beat the assault rifle up to about uh, tier 3, or its third form. The shotgun. The shotgun was basically a straight upgrade from the pistol at the short ranges, and, as, and if you mash it, it basically beat out the assault rifle, definitely. A fun weapon, but it, it would be much better to... There are better weapons to use right after it. Oh. Okay, so that was it. I got the huge treasure chest, and I got an advertisement for Kali's Caves Trees. Okay, that's it. I completed the challenge rooms then. Um. Okay then. So I've completed the main game. I expected a boss arena. Or. Or something e even bigger than that. Oh well, I'm misremembering things, and that's actually in the third game. The enemy rush as well as the arena. Oh well, so let me do, take this time to give my final toss to the game. So going back to it, the shotgun was pretty good. The assault rifle I thought was pretty powerful at first, but when being able to rapid fire the pistol and shotgun, it, it really lost its usefulness until I upgraded it up to level four, tier four. The rocket launcher. The rocket launcher in its earlier levels was one of those. It, it deals the second most p amounts of damage per projectile per explosion, although it doesn't pierce or, or deal AoE effect for some reason. And its final form is very powerful. It's a huge step up from uh, tier 3, or f form 3, because form 4 allows for the rockets to be homing, which is a huge boost in my, in my own regard. It makes dealing with a lot of enemies much easier, although these can be hung up on certain projectiles. As, men, as you saw during the grenades in the final boss fight. The ice gun, as I mentioned, would have been more better if I could equip two weapons at a time, because otherwise you could just switch, by the time we would switch the ice gun to, uh, to another weapon you could deal with enemies, it, the enemies would have been broken out, unless the ice gun was at tier 3 or tier 4, or form 3 or form 4. 
It's really a weapon if you're more cautious, and most of the enemies in this game aren't really that difficult to deal with, so you can just use your DPS weapons instead. And it doesn't work on bosses, which is unfortunate because this is where it would have been really useful. Even a minor slow effect would have been nice. Oh yeah, the laser. The laser pierces two walls and has a longer beam, but it only deals 2.5 points, 2.7 points of damage on on max on max hits. So it's really useless compared to other weapons that are more useful, which is unfortunate. If lasers could pierce through any wall, it would be much more useful. Or if it could multi-hit enemies or pierce through, it would have been much more useful. But, but otherwise, it's really subpar and unfor and forgettable. The bow. The main gimmick of the bow is that it can fire in a downward arc. Otherwise, in its early levels, it's really hard to level up unless you're in the upper park in order to hit enemies. Because going up to enemies to uh, fighting with this is a lot more challenging than it seems. I'd rather uh, stay away from using this weapon unless you want to be able to hit enemies from afar, at an angle. But if you get good enough, you can just deal with them with the blade gun and other better weapons. And the bomb gun pretty much over basically is a straight up replacement for this. And here's the most overpowered weapon in the game, or one of the three, the blade gun. It is the fourth weapon you get in this game, aka the second weapon you get in Zone 2, and it pretty much destroys Carl the Turd and most of the bosses that follow afterwards, barring the final boss, mainly because he moves out of the way. It's overpowered because it pierces uh, true enemies, and in addition to that, in addition to that being ridiculously broken, it can also bounce back and hit enemies. So, it makes it really fast to level up, because for some reason in this game, in addition to weapons taking different amounts of exp experience to level up, it seems like experience is garnered per hit per enemy, instead of per enemy destroyed, so... Uh, weapons that can't really pierce through enemies are really out of luck and take a lot longer to, to level up, especially automatically firing weapons like the assault rifle, which really took a lot of time to level up and were kind of annoying to do so. But with this, you can easily level up to level 10 in under 5 minutes in Zone 2 and completely destroy Call the Turret and the future bosses. So yeah, it's really broken and I appreciate that the developers moved it to about, to about level 70 plus in Kali's Cave 3 so it doesn't break things as much. Here's a flamethrower, the next overpowered weapon in the game. It's also piercing and it can also multi-hit like the blade gun can. In some ways, it's more powerful than the blade gun for enemies who keep moving around, especially aerial enemies. So it's another one of those must-have weapons you should level up, and it does level up pretty fast because of being piercing and multi-hit. The boomerang, the third uh, overpowered weapon in this game. It, it, al it also pierces through enemies and is multi-hit, and, uh, and like the flamethrower, it can actually pierce through walls for some reason. The blade gun can't, so that kind of removes some of its usefulness. Now. If you angle it correctly, the boomerang can actually out-DPS the blade gun. Specifically, for it's better used for stationary enemies and very slow-moving enemies, like the turrets, the rocket bandits, and the ballers. But for smaller enemies, the blade gun is better. And if you can mash the, your fire button fast enough, the blade gun is definitely better because of how rapid-firing it is. The spike gun, a utility weapon that really shouldn't be used for combat because it isn't that good. There are better weapons for that. We use this only for accessing higher platforms. The bomb gun. Uh, the bomb gun is the final weapon which I didn't really level up. It's basically a straight up, a uh, straight upgrade from the uh, bow because it fires in downward arc, and I suppose it will be upgraded to about three bombs per hit. And at base, it deals 3.5 points of damage, making this the greatest per projectile damage weapon in the game. The rocket launcher did only 2 points of damage per hit and at its base level and this does 3.5 so it is straight up the most powerful. And I will attach a video showing what it is in its max power form.
So the weapons are pretty solid, but I really wish there was more diversity. Uh, or at weapons being more balanced, aka nerfing the blade gun, the boomerang, and the flame tour, and making things like the laser gun and freeze ray a lot more powerful and more friendly to use, as otherwise the bows and other tanks were really forgotten. The bow, laser gun, freeze ray, those weapons are kind of forgotten and overshadowed by the blade gun, uh, boomerang, rocket launcher, flame tour, and the bomb gun. Now, enemy variety. As I keep mentioning, there should be more enemy variety in this game. It is fine, but it feels kind of lacking because most enemies are relatively easy to deal with, barring some exceptions like the skeleton. Sure, the turrets are difficult to deal with, but once you get the rocket launcher, or I mean the blade gun, or the boomerang, they're a cinch. The only enemies that are really difficult to deal with, even with the max power Cali or getting all the weapons, are the skeletons because of them being able to fire the skeletons, the balors because each hit takes about 3 points of damage, the rocket dudes or rocket bandits, mainly because they their rockets can actually deal AoE, and the zombies because they have so much health, although you can just jump right over them. Really, even though the weapons aren't that uh, much of a power jumper per each, barring probably the final weapon, I would have preferred if there were enemies who were a little bit more challenging to deal with, like maybe shotgun bandits or machine gun bandits, or enemies who have homing projectiles. Anything to make the game a bit more challenging, because right now, especially when you get at least half the upgrades, it's a cinch. Heck, you don't even need to get up to level 20 like I do. As long as you get the blade gun and play much more carefully than I demonstrated in this in the previous part, you should be fine. And level design was pretty blocky and I wish there was more obstacles, and that was fixed in the, in the sequel, Al along with the enemy problem and weapon balance. Oh yeah, and before I go, the music. The music of this game, there are a lot of music tracks, but for the most part they relatively blended into the background and were, were more atmospheric. Even the boss team I don't really recall, but it does add to the atmosphere. Alright, those are all the categories I can think of. So overall, after playing Kali's Trials for, from here, I would rate this game, if I were to go with scores, as 5 or 6 out of 10. If you have to choose between this game and its sequel, Kali's Caves 3, go for that one. Kali's Caves 3 have a lot more levels to explore, over 300 versus this uh, this game having about 160-ish, 160+, plus. a lot more enemies, a more, better rebalanced weapons, more features, um, a better difficulty curve, aka a challenge near the end, as well as a lot of other extras like a, a better plot development and extra and another playable character. Not to mention a new game plus mode, which adds a whole bunch of other features. Because this, because this game is a is a remake of Callie's Caves 2, it is kind of dated in that way. So if you ha if you have to choose between the two, vote your wallet. Go for Callie's Caves 3. And if you're really interested, sure, go ahead. At this, at, when I got into the first two zones of the game, I was pretty, I was having fun, but it slowly decreased because the challenge was uh, relatively falling fast, and there was, the game didn't do enough in order to keep pique my interest, so it relatively went to occur from zone three, zone four, and so on. Sure, I did want to complete the game, but it, re it became relatively dull outside of the boss fights, and the final zone where things ramped up enough. So, would I re recommend this title? Um, I would say I'm leaning towards saying pass, but if you really enjoyed these level up everything platformers where you can level up your overall character, a lot of avenues for progression, gunplay, etc., sure go for it. But if you really want to, just go for its sequel, it isn't that expensive, plus you have a lot more avenues for progression and a lot more extra features. Well, that was my blind let's play of Kali's Trials, viewers. I hope you all enjoyed this, and I thank the developer for providing a key for me to play through this title. I quite enjoyed this experience, and I wish to play the sequel in a future date. Thanks for watching, and have a nice day. Toodles!